presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Dear Dad, thank you for taking me to my very first baseball game. Before we walked into the through the tunnel to see the ballpark, my dad stopped me and said, "Now." We have, we've gone through this experience, and now we're in a city, a concrete city. But when you walk through and see that ballpark, I want you to remember it's not an arena, and it's really not a stadium. It's a ballpark, a park in the middle of the city. And then we walk in and, I mean, what kid hasn't said, wow. And I do remember thinking how much I wanted to be one of those professional baseball players when I grow up. The most important thing, obviously, never quit. He never let me quit anything in my life, and uh, he always pushed me. And thank you for those special days when we played catch and making it to watch me at my baseball games. He uh, coached my older brother, and then after his practice was done, he would coach me, and he even had enough time to set up a tarp in the basement. So after we were done practicing with the team, we'd go hit down the basement on the tarp off a tee for about an hour. He was always there for us, and. Uh, you know, always do whatever he could to, to make us the best uh, baseball players possible and uh, human beings possible. Well, Dad, I didn't make it as a major league player, but thank you for loving me, for loving me. Park in San Diego on this Father's Day. Even the dads are kids again. Celebrating the game with sons and daughters and another generation embraces our great sport. And we welcome you to the final game of this three game series. Not only Father's Day but Military Sunday and on Father's Day Major League Baseball supports the home run challenge and prostate cancer awareness. And good afternoon, everyone, with Mark Grant, Dick Amber. We're pleased that uh, you're with us on a perfect baseball day. We conclude this homestand and conclude the series with the Washington Nationals. And uh, June is also graduation mm -hmm. month, not only Father's Day month, graduation. And, and getting his diploma here in June is Will Myers. Wow, he's gotten A grades. What a great month for Will Myers. And, you know, there are 30 days in June. I'm hoping that Will Myers has a calendar in his locker that's 31st, 32nd, 33rd. <laughs> it just goes on and on. Why? Because the numbers are great. 17 games in June, a 373 average, nine home runs, but using the whole field, foul pole to foul pole, and being very selective up at the plate. Turning on pitches inside, he is just doing a great job taking bad pitches and then letting turning the lineup over to the next guy, just doing some serious damage with the opposing pitchers. Maybe there's going to be a point where they start pitching around him a little bit, so we'll have to wait and see, but he's playing great defense as well. Myers super for the Padres, and Daniel Murphy leads the major leagues in hitting. More on the second baseman of the Nationals when we return.
Welcome back, everyone, on this beautiful Father's Day Sunday. Drew Pomerantz gets the ball for the Padres going up against the Nationals. Gio Gonzalez, it's going to be a battle of the lefties here at Petco. Well, you've heard the rally cry by now. Bryce Harper wants to make baseball fun again. And nobody is having more fun than the guy who gets to hit behind him, new teammate Daniel Murphy. As he told me the other day, the best part of joining this Nationals team. It's fun. He's on base a lot. A lot. Um, he's a treat to watch from the on deck circle. I've got the best seat in the house for, you know, for the best player on the planet. So it's it's been a treat. That's Daniel Murphy hitting behind Bryce Harper. Obviously, like he said, the best seat in the house. And a very happy Father's Day out to all of the dads from us here at the Padres in Fox Sports San Diego. Well, when we return, the nation's capital pays one last final visit to America's finest city. Let's hope for a Father's Day win this Sunday. Padres and Nationals in just a moment. Brought to you by USAA, official military appreciation partner of the San Diego Padres. By Petco, your complete pet store. And by Sony High Res Audio. Finally, hear everything. USAA takes the field with members of the military and their children, getting that special photograph. It, each of the nine Padre positions. The Padres with their military blues on today, along with a special Father's Day adornments and those uh, prostate cancer awareness logos as well. Boy, what a lot going on today on a perfect San Diego afternoon. Father's Day, Military Sunday, prostate cancer awareness, military intermingling with the big leaguers, the kids out there. Life is good, Professor. Yeah. How about making it really good and win on a day game Sunday? I like it. They're 0 and 10. That's impossible. 0 and 10 on Sundays so far this year. The Nationals in first place. They bring this lineup. It's brought to you by Hyundai. Taylor leads it off again with Jason Worth, a veteran outfielder, inserted in the number two spot. Then Bryce Harper and Daniel Murphy, 360, leading the majors. Ryan Zimmerman, big RBI single last night. Anthony Rondon. Hits uh, sixth and plays third. Then Danny Espinoza, Jose Lobatone behind the plate gets a rare start for Dusty Baker and Gio Gonzalez, not a bad hitter on the mound. And left-hander Drew Pomerantz on this Father's Day will toe the slap. The 27-year-old making his 14th start of the year. You know the fastball command on the corners is very key for him because if he gets ahead, then he can drop that curveball, expand it late for the strikeout. He's having one heck of a year, approaching 100 innings for the first time in his career. And the Padres defense brought to you by San Diego County Ford dealers. Melvin Upton with seven assists among the league leaders in left field. Jay in center and Kemp uh, with six assists. Those two corner outfielders you don't dare uh, trying to take the extra base on them. On the infield Ramirez locked in at shortstop with Solarte at third. 
On the right side, Adam Rosales starts at second with Myers at first. And Derek Norris, former Washington National, behind the plate for Drew Pomerantz. Michael Taylor steps in, hitting 224. Had a couple of hits last night, and Drew Pomerantz, the left hander, ready to go to work. And we're underway, and Taylor picking on the first pitch, drives it to left field, and gone. Oh, my. First pitch, line drive, lands in the left field bleachers, and Taylor has his fifth home run of the year. Wait, wait a second. This isn't supposed to happen, is it? Let's go back, rewind it. Let's go back. Maybe, maybe well, it's a false start. Here's the thing. It's a first pitch of the ball game. It's a changeup. I mean, 99% of the time guys start with fastballs, and I'm not saying it's a bad pitch. Guys have thrown breaking balls, off-speed pitches for the first pitch of the ball game, but then to hit a home run, that's very, very odd. I don't think I've seen anything like that. So the Nationals strike quickly. Here's Jason Worth. And don't get me wrong, I'm not second guessing the pitch. No, I've no. seen guys throw curveballs, sliders. Doug Drayback, first pitch of every game he threw in his career was a breaking ball. And their most leadoff hitters take a pitch just to get things going. They like to have a long uh, pitcher's count leading off, help their teammates. That was the case for John Jay last night. Calling the balls and strikes on this beautiful day Sam Holbrook, Jerry Davis, Carlos Torres, Brian Knight on the bases. The veteran Worth now with 210 home runs. High fly ball, Jay circling under it, calls off Kemp and makes the play. And this may be the warmest day of the season. 84 degrees at game start. And uh, thank goodness there's a, a little breeze going on too. When you look at the flags out there, kind of blowing a little bit to cool things off just a tad. With one out, Bryce Harper, the right fielder, hitting 254, leads the team in home runs with 14. He's four behind Daniel Murphy in the RBI lead. And he swings and sends a high fly ball into shallow right in foul territory. Rosales and oh. somersaults in. And hopefully, okay. He almost took that hot dog. And a bag of peanuts out of that fan's grasp. <laughs> Great effort by Rosales, and uh, that's always expected from this veteran. Get the child out of the way. Here comes Rosales. And of course, Adam Rosales doing everything with a smile. Falling down into the pit. Look at the blonde woman there in the first row. <laughs> Taking cover. You didn't even knock on the door. Look at this. Look at Harper. That's how he beats the shift. An infield hit. You've got to be able to execute it. And in a way, you're taking the bat out of his hands in terms of his power. So it's not a it's a win-win. Win for him. He has a hit, a win for the Padres. He doesn't go deep. Hey, I'll take that every time and twice on Sunday. So hopefully he does that again. Good bat control with the swing and also good bat control with the bunting as well. And with the shift way over there, you don't, it's not one of those quick turnarounds. You can set up in a good bunting position and put that ball down nicely. So with one out, here's the major league leader at 360, Daniel Murphy. The former Met has found a happy hitting home in DC. And takes a strike on the inside corner. Daniel Murphy. 92. Going back to the prospect look. He shaved the beard. He shaved off 15 years as well. Murphy with 91 hits leading the National League make that 92 as Kemp plays it on a hop. That ball carried farther than Kemp had expected. He braced himself for the one hop. Then he realized, well, no, it's too late now to charge. So three hits off Pomerantz in this first inning, including the first pitch home run from Michael Taylor. First well, and second, Ryan Zimmerman, the batter. Murphy is a model of consistency. Home 369, away 352, day 366. Run is a scoring position 354. Righty's 372, lefty's 329. 
Yeah, I like those powder blue socks, huh? And uh, Ryan Zimmerman also has them pulled up to the knees. Yeah, he's wearing the high pants with those high socks. Nice. Blue, the signal color for the prostate cancer awareness efforts. Padres looking for a double play to help out Pomerantz, and there's strike one with a breaking ball. Zimmerman at 234, 10 home runs. Five men in the starting lineup for Dusty Baker have hit 10 or more home runs this year. The Nationals lead the National League in home runs. Mm. Ninety three total. Well, ninety four with Taylor's today. Zimmerman, a double play candidate, hasn't uh, done that well with men in scoring position. Good power to the opposite field. Ground ball deep to short. Ramirez, great stop there to second. Back to first out. Double play. And a beauty it was with Ramirez getting into the hole to make the stab a perfect throw to Rosales on to Myers a six a four a three double play. Home run by Taylor. Here's the Padres lineup today brought to you by Toyota. John Jay, Will Myers, Matt Kemp, one, two, three, and they've all had terrific tunes. John Solardi in the cleanup spot. Melvin Upton Jr. hits fifth, and Derek Norris. Alexei Ramirez, who just made that terrific stop to start the double play at short. Adam Rosales, who made the relay at second. Andrew Pomerantz bats nine. Jay, just under 300 on the season. Four for nine against Gonzalez in their previous meetings. And takes a strike at the knees. Hitting 366 here in June. One hopper that Murphy's able to corral and throw him out. Well hit, but to the second baseman. And the left-hander, Gio Gonzalez. His scout report was brought to you by Scripps. He's got the four seam, the two seam, the curveball, and the changeup. His curveball with two strikes. Let's keep an eye on this today. If he gets the two strikes and he bounces that curveball, can he throw it for a strike? And let's see if the Padre hitters eliminate that from the repertoire and then go after the other pitches to try to get to Gio Gonzalez. Gio Gonzalez get into that bullpen. And here's Will Myers. What a month of June he's enjoying. 17 games, nine home runs, 17 extra base hits, one per game. That leads the major leagues. Last night, a couple of doubles and a home run for Myers and three RBIs as Andy Green hoping his bat continues to make solid contact. One and one. 
raised his average up to 291. And now is the home run leader, 16, one ahead of Kemp. Gonzalez is 30 years of age. Giovanni Gonzalez from Hialeah, Florida. Three wins and five losses on the year. Line drive, base hit, Myers keeps it going. Amazing the way he's swinging the bat. Just an effortless swing, laid the wood on the horse side and has another hit. You know, it's just as if that Will Myers can get a bad call against him and he just washes it away. He says, All I need is one pitch to deal with, and he does that right there with that single up the middle. Here's your Washington defensive alignment Worth, Taylor, Harper, left to right in the outfield. Brandon Drew, Murphy, Zimmerman around the horn. Lobatone behind the plate for Gonzalez. Matt Kemp, three for eight against the pitcher he faces, including a home run and a double. Takes it outside. He's hitting 338 in June. And he's the number seven hitter in his season marks. Seventh best hitter against left handed pitching this year. He's feasted on Southpaw, 369. Breaking ball high and in, 2 and 0. Oh. Close to be called a strike. Bench coach Mark McGuire taking notes mentally and physically. 2 0. Oh. Chopped out in front of the plate. And an easy play for Lobatone as Myers moves to second. Two out, tying run there at second for Jan Salarte. Well, Gio Gonzalez, before he takes the hill, I'm going to have a little homework in between innings because he draws, it looks to me like a big cross. A lot of guys will draw. I used to draw a line like that so I could stay on line towards home plate. A lot of guys will tell where they're landing in reference to going towards home plate. He goes from the third base side. And then his landing area is on the other side. So he really throws across his mm -hmm. body this way if he drew a line. Throws a little deception in there. Solarte, the switch hitter, batting from the right side and takes strike one. And then another thing that just occurred to me, maybe, and I'll find out, maybe with his set, his set position, if he want when he comes set, if his foot has to be, if he likes his foot on that side of that line, see his foot right there? So it's in that little square, that little box. Ground ball through the left side. Myers is around third, and he will score, and the Padres tie it in the first. Salarte delivers an RBI single. Let's take a look at the keys to the game today, brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Okay, hopefully, first and foremost, the Padres split this series against the Nationals. Lay off Geo's two-strike curveball. See if he gets the two strikes and to see if he can throw it for a strike early in the count. Get to the Nats bullpen early. And if there's a day that this could happen with Gonzalez out there, it's probably their best bet as far as the rotation that they have to get in there because a lot of those guys, they've been worked down there. Melvin Upton, the hitter. At an even 250 and nine home runs. Fastball at 90. He's not going to overpower you, Gonzalez. No, he's going to be about 92, 93 tops. One and one. He's really thrown across his body. Not that that's a bad thing. Pitchers can sometimes do that to hide the ball as long as they can. How about the Giants? They won at Tampa Bay again today, five to one, eight in a row for Bruce Bochy's San Francisco nine. You know, for, for some reason that doesn't surprise me. It, it really doesn't. Leading the Dodgers by six and a half at the start. Dodgers are trailing early, third inning. Milwaukee won nothing. Three and one out Upton count in his favor 
See if he can get something he can take deep. A broken bat right back to Gonzalez and from the seat of his pants throws out Upton and the inning comes to an end but Myers and Salardi collaborate and it's 1-1. Without a dad, my mom, and my grandma basically raised me. So Father's Day to me, my dad is now in my life, but not till I was 26. But uh, my uh, grandmother was basically like my dad. So uh, I know there's a lot of kids that can relate to that today. So we still celebrated the day because they raised me, they took care of me, and she took me to every sporting event I ever played in, and every baseball game, basketball game, soccer game, and yelled at me more than a dad ever yelled at a son. So uh, I was well taken care of. But it's uh, it's always a little different for me. But now with three girls of my own, uh, they were so excited to see their dad this morning that two or three. Three of them were still in bed when I left, so uh, they're, already, they're already like teenagers, basically. So one, the oldest one, got up and hugged me, and we spent some time together. But uh, my girls mean absolutely everything to me. Oh, that's Padres manager Andy Green on this Father's Day, and his take on it just proves you don't have to be a male to celebrate Father's Day. So many moms doing it out there as well. Happy Father's Day to absolutely everyone, and to you too, Mark Grant and Dick Enberg, and of course a shout out to my dad, Don Schwartz, on this Father's Day. Just wanted to say hey, and wishing you guys a very happy Father's Day. Big day here. All right, it is indeed. It uh, it goes deep into your soul because it brings back all the memories and. My girl sending me a picture taken when uh, they were four and two, and uh, we were up at, at skiing, and uh, one's hanging over my shoulder, and the other I've got cradled in the other arm. And you know, they they sent it to me because they love that moment, right. and it brings back. That's a great yeah, picture. Yeah, isn't it though? It yeah. really is. Yeah, we just uh, the best thing we do, and hopefully we do it well. And just you know, just as mothers. When a father isn't in the picture, do a great job in in raising with a firm hand and helping, especially in the sports. So do so do dads sometimes when the mom's not around. I mean, it's Absolutely. their opportunity to play both roles. I don't think my dad ever said no when he came home from work and I asked him to get the glove out of the closet, go in the front yard, play some toss, play some catch. Yeah. Great great memories. Yeah. You know, Shakespeare himself. William the Bard said when a father gives to his son both laugh when a son gives to his father both cry. That Shakespeare could do some pretty good writing couldn't he. So one away as Rendon goes down on strikes. First punch out for Pomerantz and here's Danny Espinoza. Espinoza. A 
Californian. As we mentioned last night, following the great tradition at Long Beach State, the short stops with Longoria and Tulowitzki and then Espinoza. Switch hitter fouls that away. Lobatone, he came up through the Angel, or through the Padres organization. Switch hitting catcher next. Foul tip, strike three. Couple of punch outs here in the second for Pomerantz. <laughs> hey. Teddy can't deny him if you see pictures of me at his age you think oh my we were gosh. twins <laughs> it's scary isn't it good looking youngster right there yeah. Teddy Enberg he's out working on his triathlon this morning oh uh, there's Larry that's when I was a year old oh my goodness 1964 <laughs> me and my dad in my grandma's kitchen What's the first thing? At what age do you really remember something in your youth? I mean, I go back to a f when I was four, as that ball chopped by Lobaton and a quick one, two, three inning. We'll get your answer in the bottom half of the inning. It's a tie game here in San Diego at one. Is, uh, he was always honest with me. The biggest thing I can say that he did for me in my career is uh, he was always honest with me. Uh, I think I can count on one hand the amount of games he told me that I had a good game, um, which I, I, I really appreciate that now. Uh, you know, I see a, I, I work with a lot of younger kids now, and you know, I see their dads telling how good they are and you know how good they're going to be. When in reality, you know, that might not be the case. And my dad, he never told me that. He always told me to keep working hard, and uh, you know, I really believe that has a lot to do with my success. You know, never settling for for being you know where I am right now, and always wanting to get better. And uh, you know, I think that ha probably had the biggest impact on me in my game. Now that's so close to what my father taught me and that lesson still resonates from my high school days I said son the day you think you're so good you can't improve then you can only go one way back down. All right bottom of the second a tie game Derek Norris the batter. And he's had good success against Gonzalez you picked him uh, in the pick the stick because it. He's got three for four and two of the hits are home runs. I did. Well, you do your research. <laughs> oh. That one got him. That's and a point. 
I don't care whether he might have just shattered his elbow. You got a point and pick this thick. Boy, you're such a sensitive human. Hey, it's Derek Norris. He, he's like, he's scrap iron. He, he can bend, but he won't break. And here's Gonzalez, and he's wearing the protector, too. I think Derek has got that protector on his elbow there. Got the uh, powder blue sweatbands. He's all the tired of the day. So leadoff man on for the Padres, and here's Alexei Ramirez. What a play made on that double play in the first inning. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, I, I thought that I never could fall deeper in love with the double play, but then you <laughs> see one like that, and yeah, yeah, my heart just got pounding again. You know what? Even the room service double plays are fun to watch, aren't yeah. they? I mean, I, I'm still working on a special, <laughs> but I, I want to have a, a clock that shows how uh, four seconds how little time you know mm -hmm. you can barely get a plate in the microwave much less push the button in four seconds sure and in four seconds the balls hit fielded thrown fielded thrown cat caught and you get two outs for it and it's it's a remarkable part about this beautiful game ground ball just foul almost hit the bag at third Oh, it's going to be tough to get on that charter airplane today and leave this I know. beautiful day in San Diego. I'm, I'm sure it's about 70 and low humidity in Baltimore. <laughs> 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 yeah, but those crab cakes are awaiting. Ooh. And a beautiful ballpark at that. Mm hmm. Tried to go to right field. There's a good hole to shoot at over there. So we've got the best ballpark here in San Diego. We get to go to Oriole Park at Camden Yards to take on the Orioles, which is a, a beautiful venue in itself. Just two games against the first place Orioles, who are winning in the ninth inning 11 to 6 against Toronto today. So we go from the first place Washington Nationals here to the team in the top spot in the American League East, Baltimore. Although well, that's quite a tight race over there. Start today, Baltimore leading by one game over Boston. Pulled to third. This one is fair. The long throw to second for one. Back to first. A double play. Around the horn they go from Rendon to Murphy to Zimmerman. You know, with the uh, superstardom, superstardom status of Nolan Arenado at third base, he's a darn good third baseman. We know that. But I tell you what, Rendon over third does a fine job as well. He really does. Yeah, yeah. Terrific depth this team. Yeah. Remember I did some homework in between innings. We talked about the lines on the mound for Gio Gonzalez. There you go. Well I was right because this line right here is for him to stay on line from his foot there as landing spot. And then this one here is to stay back to remind himself to stay back over the rubber before he goes to the plate. And then he wants to have a, a guide to see that he is on line with all of his pitches. That's really interesting. I can't remember ever seeing a pitcher do that. That's in for a strike one and one. Adam Rosales. 20 hits for them home runs. You know that's a great it's just a great idea the the one as far as staying back over the rubber just to see that line just to, to remind yourself mm -hmm. hey stay back over the rubber. Don't start drifting towards the the hitter. Here's the breaking ball inside and the line toward home plate telling him that he doesn't want to drive straight to home plate he wants mm -hmm. to kind of cross fire the ball correct because he goes as we mentioned earlier Dick he goes from the extreme third base side of that and a walk to Rosales who sprints to first base and now that double play Ramirez ball becomes all the more important first walk from Gonzalez brings up Pomerantz that turns the lineup over Nothing but blue skies overhead on this June 19th. Well, you might have noticed in the uh, upper right field corner that our Marine recruits are not with us today, and for good reason. Pomerantz, two for 23. Clouds it away. Watch out. And uh, we miss their presence, but it's a rather important day at the uh, Marine. Recruiting Depot, they're graduating. The class is graduating. That's great. 
you know, I had a nephew that graduated from there, and I did not know this, but that's open to the public. If you get a chance, oh find out when there's a great. It's once every eight weeks, I think, whenever the program is, when they graduate. It's open to the public, so it's usually obviously family and friends. But I didn't find out until I went there myself. Find it on your calendar and put it on there and do yourself a favor and go to one of those. It's one of the most incredible ceremonies you'll experience. That's good advice. Good take there by Pomerantz. It's one and two. Rosales with his lead at first base. Two outs. Bottom of the second. Oh. On the corner, right at the letters, and that's the strikeout number one for Gio Gonzalez. We go to the third. everyone and happy Father's Day. Well, as manager Andy Green says, it is steps in the right direction when it comes to starter Tyson Ross, who has been on the disabled list since April. He threw his first bullpen session yesterday. He threw 15 pitches, all fastballs, off the bullpen mound. And as Andy says, it's just baby steps, but definitely headed in the right direction. He will be making the trip to Baltimore with the team later today and he'll be there so he can get extra attention from pitching coach Darren Balsley. Also making the trip will be Andrew Kashner. Although Andy did say that his 15 day disabled list stint may have to be extended but he will also be there with the team as well. All right. Thank you for that report Julie and um, be sure you got that uh, sunscreen going down there. That's a yeah. Mid June sun is about as uh, strong a raise as we'll get all season long, and this is a tough time. So you, it's excusable for you to head for a little shadow and shade. Pitcher Gonzalez starts for the Nationals here in the third. Mm. Just missed. There's yeah. a Ute fan. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's hot in those stands. Stay hydrated, drink a lot of water. Won't be tough for us to find our fans of the day, will it? Oh, good call, Professor. <laughs> Man, you'd you would really melt in this. I mean you're you start perspiring when it's fifty five degrees. I need to take a shower right now. <laughs> Just looking at it, huh? Swing and a miss. And another strikeout for Pomerantz. He gets the opposing pitcher. That's his third. Julie mentioned her father. Good looking gentleman. Oh, that's a great picture. Yeah. Dodger Stadium. That's right. Good call. Of course, my dad is a huge Brooklyn Dodgers fan ah. coming from the East Coast. And then when the team left for the West Coast, he said they broke his heart so he could never be a Dodger fan again. But of course, he did play in Dodger fantasy camp. So 
He, of course, has a soft spot in his heart. Duke Schneider, number four, his favorite oh, player of all time. The Duke from uh, here in San Diego County, mm -hmm. Temecula. Avocado man. What an elegant guy he was, huh? Ground ball, and that's up the middle and through. A base hit for Taylor. So he leads off the ball game with a home run. And there he goes for a possible double, and he legs it out. So a ground ball to left center, and Taylor left the batter's box spreading and stretches what should have been a single into a double. Well, that's what speed will do for you. If you hit a ball in the gap, and it's not going to clear the gap, but the outfielders need to go there right or left. You know, you got to play right in front of you, put some pressure on them. And take that extra 90 feet. Okay, he sees the ball there. He knows that John Jay is going to get it. Keeps going, doesn't break stride. Turns it on. That's a great angle. You really get the appreciation of mm -hmm. And he didn't make the sharpest turn at first base, but boy, did he ever get it into overdrive yep. in that last 90 feet. So, a one out double for Taylor. Jason Worth flied out to center field his first time. Last 10 games, this 37 year old from Glenwood, Illinois, hitting at a 421 pace. Rested yesterday. Runners going. And unable to get a grip on the ball, Norris, and Taylor steals third. So now they can break the 1 1 tie on an out. His 10th stolen base. Sometimes pitchers will fall into the trap of one looking at second base. Now, when you have a leadoff hitter's got speed, you know, you got to set, you got to look a couple times just to keep, even step off, maybe twirl and not throw just to keep him close. But that was perfect timing by Michael Taylor. And a right handed batter up there, tougher yeah. for the catcher to throw around him. Couldn't get a clean grip. Norris. Infield will play in at the corners. Swing and a miss. So here's a time for a strikeout if ever you'd want one if you're Pomerantz. Deny that run on an out. The chances are here it's going to call for the deuce, the curveball out of the hand of Drew Pomerantz. Now the infield comes all the way in. With the except, uh, exception of uh, Ramirez, starts back and now moves in. So they're all just a step off the grass. Well, if it is a curveball for a strike, heads up on the left side because that's a hot hit coming right your way to speed up his bat. Swing and a miss. Strike three. There is the big strikeout. Number four for Pomerantz. And he stayed with the fastball up the ladder. And Dick, you mentioned it. If there was ever a perfect time for a strikeout with one out, the runner at third, that is it. Boy, not even close. He's just way behind on that one. So with two outs, Bryce Harper, who bunted his way on for a base hit, beat the shift by just laying a nice bunt toward third base. Back in the first inning. Myers guarding the line at first base. Rosales out on the outfield grass. Good stop by Norris. Well, this is one of those situations where you don't want to give him too good of a pitch to hit. So then that puts a little pressure on Derek Norris, just like that first pitch we saw, the breaking ball in the dirt. He's really got to be on his game. Harper has walked as Many times as anyone in the National League, Paul Goldschmidt also 56 times they've walked him, but uh, no one has been intentionally past more as he takes a big rip, one and one. Good cut fastball. Looks like the body of Harper was going one way and his swing was going the other. Already enjoying phenomenal major league success, and he's just 23. All star for three years. Another fastball high, two and one. That's his career already 111 home runs before his 24th birthday.
High fly ball left field. Upton waiting for it to come out of the blue. And that'll do it. They leave the man at third. Taylor, we go to the bottom of the third. Brought to you by Geico, Oakland, 1987 All-Star Game. No one would score until the 13th inning. Tim Raines drilled his third hit of the game, a two-run triple to left center. And the National League would win the game 2 to nothing. And Tim Raines would be voted the most valuable player. I love seeing the old names in the back of the heyday. Ozzie Virgil scoring. Hubie Brooks from the Expos. Those were the days. Most hits in the month of June, John Jay. Hey. Oh, line drive caught by Gonzalez. He was ready for that screaming comebacker. And there's one away. So Jay has hit it hard twice to second and out of the mound. Nothing to show for it. That's a good old fashioned hockey suit right there. Hey, good fielding position by Gio as he gloves that one perfectly. Yes. And right about now, a pitcher saying, How did I do that? Did you uh, feel that way when? Oh, uh, just of instinct. It's just, just amazing how the body reacts to a play like that. It's how you get your glove up so quickly. It's just that one little second where you see it, that that picture in your brain, and you react. The sound of the bat and the ball, and the sound of the ball and the glove are one simultaneously. Yep, yeah. it's unbelievable how quickly it happens. Myers singled to center and scored the Padre run in the first inning. Came in on Salarte's. Base hit with two outs. Five game hitting streak, but that hardly tells a story. His June numbers are phenomenal. Fooled on that one off speed. There's the breaking ball. That's the curveball we're talking about. If taken, that would have been a ball. But easier said than done. You see it, it's got that big loop in it. Looks like it's going to be a, a good pitch to rip at. And he gets him swinging. Second strikeout for Gonzalez. And that was one of the keys. Lay off the curveball. Two strikes, right? That would have been a ball. And I don't think Gio has proven that he can throw that for a strike yet. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. So here's Matt Kemp. Tapped out in front of the plate. And catcher Lobaton threw him out. Padres will visit D.C. Late in July, after the All Star break for a three game series in July 22nd, 3rd, and 4th. Shift on. Zimmerman, the lone defender on the right side.
2 0. Through June 18th, compared to last year, average about the same, but home runs a plus 11 for Matt. RBI is plus 11. Slugging like percentage reflecting that. 3 0. Almost a pitch around. Yeah, everything's away. So the shift has worked against Kemp, but he's hit under his season average. They can't shift on the home run. He's got seven of those against the shift, and he swings 3 0. You know, there's got to be some guys that cannot be 100% to where the shift doesn't play with their mind. And I'm not throwing it out there that it affects any certain hitters. I'm not thinking of certain hitters, but. There's got to be a guy come up to the plate and they see that shift and they, they start thinking about it. It gets in their head. Don't you think? Oh, yes, absolutely. Three and two. And this is a thinking man sport. And you can think too much and hurt yeah. the team as well. It's like sometimes, you know, you'll scoot away from me a little bit during a certain part of the game and it, like, like, it freaks me out. <laughs> and then you'll move closer to me. <laughs> And, and it, I can't adjust because I'm used to you sitting in one certain spot all the time. Yeah, well, well, we're creatures of habit. Now, this it's is like my little far, play. Like right now, I kind of feel. But if I go over like this. Oh, then now I'm, I'm really off my game. <laughs> and now, if you come a little closer I'm, like there, I'm comfortable. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm not going to hug you. <laughs> Sweeney will come up here in the third or fourth inning. He'll do that. Outside ball four. Second walk from Gonzalez with two outs Kemp aboard. For Jan Salarte. Well, Mark Sweeney is going to join us next half inning, and we're going to talk about that curveball from Gio Gonzalez. Salarte knocked in his 21st run of the season in the first inning. Here's the curveball. Okay, taken for a ball, right? Now, there's been some curveballs, and that was way out of the zone, easy to recognize, but not really sure if he's thrown any. If taken, would be a called strike. So two outs here in the third a bouncer to short up with it is Espinosa he'll get it the short way and we go to the fourth inning tied at one. My dad was my coach growing up. He uh, coached my older brother, and then after his practice was done, he would coach me and even had enough time to set up a tarp in the basement. So after we were done practicing with the team, we'd go hit down the basement on the tarp off a tee for about an hour. He was always there for us and uh, you know, always do whatever he could to, to make us the best uh, baseball players possible and, and human beings possible. So Travis uh, Jankowski with his thoughts on this Father's Day as Mark Swinney joins us here in our Fox Sports San Diego TV booth, and Happy. we go to the top of the fourth inning. Happy Father's Day, guys. You right. too, Marco. Thank you very much. 
You know, you, you've got to, you weren't here when Mark Renty, he's very sensitive about the space no. between us. So, so am I. So yeah. don't, no. well, he wants you to be close. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, I knew Happy Father's Day, brother. Oh. That's awesome. Oh. You're a great dad. I mean, how could you not? You're a great dad and a great friend. Right yeah. back at you. And the pitch. <laughs> Hi, Papa. <laughs> Shortstop Ramirez. You need a hug, Dick. Uh, I've had too many in my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> Murphy pops up, and here's Ryan Zimmerman, and ah, the swing dog, and his dad, what a good looking gentleman. That was a magical day. That was my wedding day, and you can see uh, Pops. What's his name? Uh, Dan. Dan Sweeney. Dan the man. But here's the thing, and like Travis Shankowski talked about, it, he was my little league coach. I mean, what? Yeah. The, that's what you want to do. He fostered me into the game of baseball, and, and thank you, Dad, for everything that you have done for me. You know what? I had a unique situation growing up. My dad was my coach throughout Little League as well, and Pony League, but here's the stipulation. Paulie Arling was a teammate, and his dad was the head coach. My dad was assistant. They had an agreement since day one. My dad never said anything to me on the baseball field. Mr. Arling was the guy, God rest his soul, he just passed away recently, a very influential man in my life. He was the guy who told me how to do things right. He instructed me. And then my dad took care of Paulie, his son. Yeah, good formula. And as a no, kid, what are you going to do? You're not going to listen to your dad. You can listen to some yeah. other adult. He doesn't know anything. Yeah. Well, there's, right. no, there's no blueprint. I mean, my yeah. dad wasn't hard on me at all. Mine wasn't either. But he also wanted to talk about the game. I think that's what really he taught me. Just embrace talking about the game and learning from it no matter who you were from. I was. It was easier for me. I was the youngest of four boys. There you go. So I had to learn as we went. And obviously it was... He adapted to our style of, of living, but also he, he just loved what we did, and he always wanted to be there. So that's that's the greatest example he was for me. Two balls, two strikes to Zimmerman. And he follows that at the plate. Yeah, Larry wasn't a screamer or a yeller. He just just let me do my thing. Yeah, and that's that's good. It's a, it's a good mix. You have to have intensity yeah. at times. I mean, there's certain times that you have to have it, which my dad gave me. But he mm -hmm. wasn't a screamer either. Very laid back mm -hmm. but he had that certain intensity that you that you think I think you need no matter what you do yeah. in life. Yeah. My dad would coach me he'd catch me throwing the tennis ball against the garage practicing my infield and he said get your butt out in the back 40 and start working <laughs> with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> High pop up middle of the infield Rosales drifting back and the second baseman fighting the sun for the second out a couple of pop ups Murphy and Zimmerman two away here in the fourth. And that'll bring up Anthony Rondon. He struck out the first time. How beautiful is this day? Huh? Unbelievable. Can't believe you guys have to get on an airplane. I get to go home and spend some time with my family. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that hurt. I know. But I, I, with the off day tomorrow, I'm pretty. It's yeah. it's pretty interesting. Yeah. But you guys have to get on a plane today instead of tomorrow. Yeah. Mud and I will go up to room 484 and. <laughs> <laughs> Get out our grill and cook a couple of dogs and say happy day after Father's Day. You know you're not supposed to give out your room number, right? <laughs> now you're going to have knocks on the door. 484, whoever's in that room's in trouble. I get to wear the robe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll wear the Speedo this time. <laughs> I hate wearing the speedo. You know that. Oh, it looks good on you, though. <laughs> that pitch is in there, one and two. The the thing is, you wear slippers with <laughs> those ones. They give you the free ones. Oh, those are yeah. great. Yeah, I always put my chocolate in them. You know, <laughs> like hot chocolate. Oh, <laughs> back. Next half inning, Mark and I are going to be talking about Gio Gonzalez's oh, curveball yeah. when he goes back out there for the fourth because I think it's a very crucial point that you made before the game, Mark. We talked about it. Well, one and two, and that pitch uh, just fades, but it looked as if from five strikes that that caught a piece of the corner. Two and two. The score is one and one.
Milwaukee continuing to lead the Dodgers in the fifth inning, one nothing. The Giants five one over Tampa Bay and Florida. Espinosa would be next. Boston wins two to one over Seattle. They're putting pressure on Washington. That's in there. Strike three. A breaking ball. It catches Rendon looking for the second time. A one, two, three inning for Pomerantz. The Padres will lead off the bottom half of the inning with Melvin Upton. Brought to you by Ram Trucks. We're going to talk about the repertoire and specifically about the curveball of Gio Gonzalez. He's got the fastball, he's got the changeup, and he also has the curveball. Now, here's the key, Mark Sweeney. The curveball today, if taken, would it be a called strike? You made a great point before the game. You and I were talking, and that was one of the keys to lay off the curveball with two strikes, the curveball of Gio Gonzalez. Well, when you're watching the opposing pitcher, you have to make sure that they are throwing it for strikes. And you made the point earlier in the game. If he's not throwing for strikes, you have to prove that he will do that. Melvin Upton starts things here in the bottom of the fourth inning. He tapped back to the mound. Well, yeah, that was the ball, just a one hopper, not the line drive. That was John Jay who lined off to the pitcher. One and one. But if you think of the both of the left handers today, guys, that both of them have to have the ability to pitch with their fastball at the top of the strike zone. Line drive, base hit, just over the leaping try of Espinosa. Upton gets things started here in the fourth. Padres with their third hit off Gio Gonzalez. Well, Mark, back to the point we were making. Look at this curveball here. If this is taken, it's probably a strike. And on contact, mid thigh high, Melvin Upton Jr. is all over it. Well, it's not like you have to look for a bad breaking ball because if you're sitting on a fastball and you pick that rotation up out of the hands, it's an easier adjustment for these hitters. And that was a nice job by Melvin. So Norris with the leadoff man aboard here in the fourth. Hit by a pitch his first time. Now oh guys, Geo is susceptible to that big inning. You have to capitalize if you're the opposition. Taken low. Second baseman Murphy shaded way over near the bag at second. That opens up a huge hole 85 feet on the right side with Zimmerman holding the runner. First and third, follow the arrow. Low again. Again, he's pinpointing a lot of pitches right on the edges, and that could have been called a strike. Well, it looks like Derek Norris is looking for that ball in, maybe that curve ball or even a fast ball in. Yeah, 
slip back into the third tier. And he got it right there. Oh, oh I love hugs. Love is in the air. Gentlemen made a good play on the carom. Two balls and a strike to the Padre catcher. Ground ball toward the hole and a nice stop, but then Espinosa can't get a grip on the ball and everyone is safe. That should go as an infield hit for Norris, and it is. Tough play for Espinosa. That's much like the play Ramirez made to start a double play. Well, fastball on the outside part of the plate off the end of the bat, but in that 5.5 hole. Nice work by Espinosa just to even get a glove on that. I don't think he had a play even with Melvin Upton running. Nice hitting by Derek Norris. The Padres are have something going. Well, let's say Ramirez the hitter. Bounced into an around the horn double play his first time. Done a good job with men in scoring position. Pitch he'd like to have back. That tells me he was searching for that fastball. Saw the changeup out of the hands of Gonzalez. Both teams scoring in the first inning. Taylor a leadoff home run for Washington. Singles by Myers and Solarte. Even things. Bottom half of the first. Strike two. Ooh. Mark Sweeney, did you ever see a first pitch of a ball game a changeup and swung on for a home run? You know, I think it had a lot to do with he was he thought it was a fastball, just a harder changeup. I think it was 84 miles an hour. But yeah, I mean I, I've seen it before. It's just one of those things. You just barrel up a ball. I think he was trying to hit a fastball the other way or middle of the field and got a changeup that was a good location. Watch out. Run ball chopped to the right side. That's exactly where Gio Gonzalez wanted to throw that ball because Lobaton was up out of the crouch, given the high target. This is when he wants to get to that curveball, like we talked about earlier. The curveball that looks like a strike and gets out of the strike zone. Lead off singles from Upton and Norris. And with no one out, the Padres have a chance to break this 1 1 tie. So I'm wondering if he goes up with the fastball that that fastball we just saw and then trying to bury the curveball down and in on this pitch. Soft fly ball off third. Rendon tucks it away for the first out. That'll bring up Adam Rosales who walked his first at bat. To the Nationals team, and of course they were the Montreal Expos. This start is the best in franchise history, 43 and 26, opening a six-game lead over the New York Mets and the American League East, or National League East, rather. There's that slow breaking ball pulls the string on it at 75. Talked to Davey Lopes the first base coach of the Washington Nationals earlier in our pregame show and I asked him that question how he's this team stacks up with the Mets and he said I think we match up very well. Obviously it's about the starting pitching because the Mets have the talented staff. But I think this offense is much better than the Mets. I agree. Second baseman. Murphy sneaking in behind the base runner. Yeah, it is Davey. And you think about what's going on when you're around your, your own club all the time. You're thinking about the weaknesses and how they can fortify their club. And he didn't speak to that, but he loves how they match up against the Mets. And hopefully they can win that division, is what he talked about. And it's another pickoff move, and the throw was higher. Upton would have been in trouble. Yeah, you got to be careful, and you see Daniel Murphy putting that right knee down. 
Most runners will go back and they'll put their hands down. Watch how he drops that knee. See, the hand indicates to throw. That right knee goes down. Most runners will go into the back of the base like Upton does. Now, my question is, why can they do that, but catchers can't block home plate, right? It's oh, the same concept. I agree with you, yeah. but what you do when you see that, you go in feet first. Shorten up your there lead you just a little bit. And you know if he's going to do that, you go in feet first, he's not going to put that knee down. Yeah. Good lengthy lead by Upton. And Rosales works the count to two and one. He walked the first time. Seven for 23 and a couple of long balls for Rosales in the last 23 at bats, last nine games. Hit the center field. Taylor going back, back, back. It's off the wall. One run scores. Upton right behind him. In comes a Norris, and he scores. The Padres take the lead. A ringing double off the bat of Adam Rosales. I'll tell you what. When that ball was hit, I didn't think it was going to travel the way it did because the sound of it, it looked like it was off the end of the bat. A changeup. Well, he stays on it nicely, gets extended to where he just gets enough of the good part of the bat on it. Taylor is off his running. And watch Norris on the back end. This is what I love, the good read. You can see that angle going over Taylor, but he's actually past second base. And with that read, he scores easily. Looks like a relay team at Rio getting ready for Rio. <laughs> Pass the baton and two run scores on Rosales double in his 12th and 13th RBIs. Still only one out, and Pomerantz, the pitcher, up. Well, the Padres have played these Nationals, uh, first place team, tough in the last uh, four games. No Walker, with that's for sure. Seven to five in game one, or get eight to five in game one, seven to five Nationals in game two, then the Padres with the six run. Eighth inning winning 7 3 last night. Take a 3 1 advantage here in the fourth inning today. Pulled to the shortstop side. Rosales has to hold his ground. Two away and top of the order, John Jay, the man with the best average runners in scoring position on the club. We always see it with runners in scoring position and John Jay tremendous. He is third behind his former teammates Biscotti and Adams. But even lefty on lefty you can see he attacks the strike zone and also loves the first pitch. Chance to pick up Rosales with two outs 354 against left handed pitching in these situations. That's amazing. Checks his swing and goes around, says plate umpire Holbrook. He's hit a one hopper to second and lined out to the pitcher today. Well, they're working on their pickoff move here in the inning. This time it's the shortstop Espinosa creeping in behind the runner Rosales. So Espinosa also put that leg down. And slow curveball. One and one. Padres taking the lead here in the fourth. Three to one. Again outside. Will Myers would be next. Uh -huh. 
Oh. Yeah, a gift there for Gonzalez. Two and two. Wow. That changed the whole at bat. Jay's okay, clipped by that pitch. Second batter hit today by Gonzalez. Ooh, off the, right off that right wrist. And that's because of that first pitch. The first fastball of the at bat was a strike inside the top part of the strike zone. Also trying to stay in there with the curveball. Chris Spire, the bench coach. May get somebody up in the bullpen. 70th pitch for Gonzalez coming up. They wonder seeing if sometimes those hitters will have the knob of the bat out there. And they'll use this time for Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, to jock out to the mound. Will Myers singled and scored in the first, struck out swinging the second time. Boy, Gio Gonzalez, just by looking at him right there, he kind of lost a little bit. Maybe a look of concern on his face. Well, you see the record coming in. Gio Gonzalez has struggled at times, and it, he'll dominate a game and give up that huge inning. You wonder where he is mentally after that at bat, that change up to Rosales, and hitting John Jay. Yeah, this he's got to face the hottest hitter. Yeah, this is the exact situation you want to be in. He got Myers to strike out on a couple of slow, low curveballs the last time. What a month of June. Ranking first in home runs, RBI, slugging percentage, OPS in the majors. So when you say he's the hottest hitter around, that means American and National League this month. Well, I really believe Will Myers has taken that next step. And why I say that, obviously health comes into play. But now he's starting to believe that it, the expectations are every single day he has to produce. Putting a team on its back has a lot of pressure involved, and I think Will Myers wants to embrace that. He's been a very confident hitter. Takes outside, not too anxious. Yesterday against Max Scherzer in the first inning goes the opposite field for a home run. Number 16 on the season. I well, said after the game, he looks for that fastball. He simplifies things, and when you simplify it, good things usually happen. Way outside, 3 and 0. Kemp got the green light, 3 and 0 earlier in the game. Matt on deck. You know, even though third base is open, is he going to risk trying to pitch around Will Myers and then face Matt Kemp? Three and one. Well, even in a 3 1 count, you're still looking for a mistake. You don't want to get out of the strike zone. You don't want to hit his pitch. And I wouldn't be surprised if he goes a 3 1 change up here. And it was. Well placed, and the count full. That'll give the runners a jump start. He might throw him another one here. Why not? Throw it 3 1 to go to 3 2. Why not throw it again? Rosales at second. Jay at first, ready to sprint out of the blocks on this 3 2 delivery. Too low. Ball four, and the bases are full. That's the third walk from Gonzalez. Well, somewhat of a pitch around, and like Mark Sweeney said, he doesn't want to really throw a pitch down the middle. There's the first pitch curveball, fastball away 2 and 0, fastball away 3 and 0. Okay, now he goes to work. Good dot outside corner 3 and 1, change up 3 2. And the fastball down and in 4 and 2. Take your base. Rosales pushed over to third, Jay moves to second, Myers at first, a Padre over every pillow for Matt Kemp. Matt loves after a walk looking and searching for that first pitch. He's tapped out and walked today. Takes ball one. 
Ooh, it's a good pitch. And yeah, Lobatone lost that strike. It's the way he received that pitch. Chance to break it wide open for the Padres. They've got two runs home, and the base is loaded for Matt Camp. Same pitch, a little farther inside. Rosales with a two run double. Jay hit by a pitch, and Myers with a walk. Ground ball to Hopper to third, Rondon to second for the out, and the Padres leave the bases loaded. They do get two, and we move to the fifth inning with the home side in front, three to one. in the home run challenge to benefit prostate cancer research going into this final day one million seven hundred seventy five thousand dollars have been raised you can make a pledge by going to homerunchallenge.org and this perfect baseball day and lots of fathers and sons and daughters a nice turnout to see the final game of the homestand and of this series Top of the fifth, Padres in front, 3-1. Giving Drew Pomerantz a couple of runs to lean on. Bottom third of the order for the Nats, Espinosa, Lobatone, and the pitcher Gonzalez here in the fifth. Bounces that one, and it's 2-0. Oh. Just wanted to point something out, guys. Obviously, two runs for the Padres after our Father's Day hug Mark and I had. That's right. It's not, I don't think it's a coincidence either. No, I think it's just one of those things we expect now. Hey, real men hug. No question about it. And real men can hit it a long way, and that's what uh, Danny Espinosa has just done. A long bomb to left center, and that'll make it three to two. Espinosa rounds the bases for the twelfth time this year. Both. Nationals runs coming on home runs. Number 12. Yeah, anytime you have a 2 0 count, you're flirting with disaster, and especially if you throw a fastball, you got to locate. That almost had Cal Ripken like swing to it, didn't it? Taylor Homer to start the ball game, and now. A leadoff home run, Espinosa. Ground ball up the middle. Ramirez ranging and throws out Lobaton. And our cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Major League leaders, most players with 10 home runs or more. 
Dusty Baker's Nationals have six different men with at least 10 home runs this year. A total of 95 as a team, most in the National League. Gio Gonzalez is the batter. Struck out swinging the first time, and he hits it deep to left center field. But Upton able to range over and make the catch. Didn't quite get it on the sweet spot, two away. Top of the order, Michael Taylor. And time for our Cholula flamethrower. I had a little Cholula today, mixing with a little ketchup on my omelet here at the ball yard. 93. And it had a little tang to it. It wasn't really hot sauce. So just a little bit to, just a little bit to, you know, bring out the flavor a little bit of my mushroom, green onions, bacon omelet. Yeah, Brenda made it for you, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She does a great job they on her omelets. Great job. Hey, we are uh, really overfed here. You know that? We shouldn't say that in public. Some of us more than others. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I meant to say that our cafeteria, they our are, media cafeteria, is one of the best in, the, in baseball, right? They are tremendous. Thank you for keeping us full. <laughs> <and fat>. <laughs> <Her>. <laughs> Luis knows of my adoration for peanut butter cookies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to go get one, and he's got a plate for three on there. I said, no, I'd love to get one, but then I come back two more times. He wants you to share. Yeah. They take care of us big time. They do. Taylor, a home run on the first pitch of the game, and a ground ball double pass short the last time, using his speed to leg that one out for a two-bagger. I love mandarin oranges and cottage cheese. You know what Michael Taylor likes? First pitch of the ball game, change up, going yard. I think you're right, Mark. When he was looking for a fastball, and it was like a batting practice fastball, yep. the change up. So three and one now to Taylor. You know, from the hitter's perspective, what are you changing up on mm -hmm. when it comes down to it? You haven't seen a pitch yet out of the hands of Pomeranz. So you're just as a hitter saying first pitch hit first pitch. Well you're looking for a fastball you're looking for something over middle of the plate. Sped up his bat just a little bit. Well the Padres will leave by charter flight after the game to Baltimore arriving in the early hours. And then an off day tomorrow and Tuesday we'll be back with you at four o'clock here on Fox Sports San Diego. First of a two game series with the Orioles. Perdomo against right hander Tyler Wilson of the Orioles. Watch out. Look out. That one screaming into the second row down the right field side. She had it all the way. Mm -hmm. Back. You know, I have a great idea for a contest. You know, the big contest where they give huge money, you know, sure. somebody can hit yep. a ball through a, a two inch hole at 500 feet away and yep. they get a million dollars. You could put up a thousand dollars to anyone who gets a souvenir baseball that doesn't smile. You'd never have to pay off. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you could sponsor that. <laughs> There's another drive by Taylor. If it's fair, it's tied. It is another home run for Taylor. Two homers and a double for leadoff hitter Michael Taylor. His fifth and sixth home runs of the year. And we have a new game at three. All three Washington run solo shots. Full count. You work around it a little bit? Yeah, it looked like a slider. Well, Michael Taylor hasn't been the player that the Washington Nationals expected, but today he looks very comfortable. Career game for Taylor, two homers and a double. I think Julie took him and they picked the stick. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so a couple of homers here in the fifth inning. Solo shots from Espinosa and Michael Taylor to tie the game. Jason Worth looks at a strike one and one. He so has flight out and struck out. Two off speed pitches for home runs. Mm -hmm. 
Now the Nationals with the home run muscle tops in the National League and they've added three more today to their league leading total now at 96. Three and one. Padres just in contrast have 73 home runs as a team. That's a strike. Full count. Yeah, see where he's going with that sign. Yeah. Swing and a miss. That's where he's going. Back to the dugout. Strikeout number six, but a home run a jolt from Taylor and another from Espinosa, and we're tied at three. The game tied at three, and here's our Fan Diego fans of the game. Oh, who's a good boy? The kid's excited. He will be when he gets that uh, souvenir foul ball. Yeah. Not going to win the million dollars, though, is he? No. You got to see. You got to make it so difficult. But you give the big prize. Now and then, it pays off with that mid-court shot in basketball. You know, not have to give away the car. And then the kid isn't old enough, so they take the car back. Solarte drove in a run in the first inning with a single. He grounded to short his last time. Yeah, the Nationals showing this crowd here at Petco Park why they lead the league in home runs. Three of them today. None last night, but uh, five in the previous two guys. Eight home runs in the series. Yeah, for the Padres, though, they have to answer back. Done a much better job of that as of late. Two and one to John Hervis. 67 year old Dusty Baker at the helm. Three time National League Manager of the Year. He's now crowding Bruce Bochy. Bochy's number 16 all time in wins and Dusty 17. Yeah, 20 years of experience as a manager. Two time all star as a player. And he won both the silver slugger and the gold glove. He was a good ball player. Very good. You know, the one thing that sticks out with Dusty for me is there's a great camera shot of when Henry Aaron hit his record breaking home yeah. run. Dusty's on deck and he raises his fist up in the air. <laughs> watching. He was right there on deck. I mean, how cool is that? Ball four. The leadoff man on with a walk. This Scott Murray telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated by the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. A lot of folks uh, haven't been around long enough to remember Dusty's playing career. 
He hit 242 homers and uh, had a career average of 278. Yeah. He could play. Also won a championship with the Dodgers in 81. A little frustrated here to see his pitcher give up his fourth walk of the day and the leadoff man on. Upton with a swing and a miss has a single and two trips. Well, he has a long leash with these starting pitchers. Mm -hmm. And that's one of his styles is to let them go. And I think this pitching staff has earned that. But that can get you into tough situations. But this bullpen is taxed. Yeah, remember with the Cubs, Kerry Wood, and Mark Pryor. Giants, Cincinnati, Cubs, now the Nationals. He almost didn't get the job in Washington. But Black was their first choice. Yep. And uh, it appeared that it, the deal was made and then something went wrong at the last minute. Yeah, kind of an odd scenario. You know, opened it up for Dusty. Ball two strikes to Upton. Smothered out in front of the play. That's going to be a tough play for Gonzalez, and he doesn't get him, throws it away. And here comes Solarte around third, and Hoffman will hold him on to second. Upton, and the Padres got something boiling here in the fifth. Infield hit for Upton, and a throwing error, Gonzalez. I think Gonzalez want, thought Lobatone was going to take that ball. A little bit of indecision as you see Melvin hitting it off the back part of the home plate. Lobatone doesn't pick it up very well and then the throw down the line into the runner. Yeah, he would have been better advised just to take the ball and uh, tuck it in his pocket. And that's a rare error for this Washington team. They are the best in the National League. They've made only 25 now 26 errors all season. Back to back innings where Mike Maddox has gone out to try to calm down Gio Gonzalez. Yeah, last night the Padres got a key throwing error from the left handed pitcher Felipe Rivero with the bases loaded. A comebacker should have been a double play and he wound up throwing it to the screen and the Padres got a couple of runs. Now they get another piece of help on an Aaron throw from the pitcher. Last five starts, 0 and 4. Well, it's working out of the stretch quite a bit right there for Gio Gonzalez. Tie breaking run 90 feet away, no one out. Derek Norris takes ball one. Hit by a pitch. And an infield hit to deep short. Two mates aboard. High strike. One and one. When he was a property of the Washington Nationals, he was drafted by them. He was their minor league player of the year, and that was seven years ago. Traded Oakland and then Oakland to the Padres. Swing and a miss. That seemed faster than 90 because most of the other pitches are in the 70s. Exactly. He set that up. Because now the Padres are starting to sit on that breaking ball, even the changeup. When you get in between, sometimes you can swing through fastballs. And he got the high strike called a couple of pitches before. Does Gio Gonzalez try to go up the ladder with the heater right here? He inside levels the count at two and two. Pretty consistent. 93rd delivery coming up. High drive to left field that won't go all the way to the track, but that's deep enough to get the run home. And here comes Salarte, and the Padres lead four to three. 20th RBI of the season for Derek Norris. Well, the Padres come right back. We saw the pitch speeds 89, 90, 90, 89. So Derek Norris has a pretty good gauge on the fastballs of Gio Gonzalez. And sure, it didn't hit it on the sweet spot, got in on him, but in just enough of the belt buckle to 
Loft it to left field for the sack fly. He'll take that. Thank you very much. The old leadoff walk formula. Solarte walks to start the inning. He's coming around to break the tie. Here's Ramirez. High breaking ball. Grounded into a 5 4 3 double play and fouled out to third his last time. Now the pot raise four and the Nationals three. Washington unable to hold serve. After scoring two at a time. I know we have a lot of tennis fans that follow baseball as well, and San Diego, one of the leading tennis communities in the nation. And I was away a couple of days for Bud Collins Memorial Service back in Boston two days ago. And get a moment to share just the one little final note on the incredible Arthur Bud Collins. Ground line drive, Ramirez hooking. And foul. I mean, it was held in the Trinity Church, this magnificent church in downtown Boston at Copley Square. And everyone in tennis, including the president of the All England Club, was there, and Billy Jean, and uh, Chris Everett gave uh, eulogies, among uh, others, and, and just about anyone you can imagine in sports writing, sports casting was, was there. And one common theme came out that Bud Collins never said a bad word about anyone. Yeah. And it's so true. I was thinking about, yeah, he never, you never heard him say anything bad about anyone. Isn't that nice Isn't to hear? That yeah. a legacy. Yeah. He's a beautiful man. One and one to Ramirez. Boy, they've been working on that yeah. play. Is this spring? Let me see. Is this March or is this June here? Yeah. Working on that pickoff. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a pitcher throw that many times to second base, but hey, not a bad idea. One away and Upton at second. Ramirez trying to pick him up. Ooh. Stepped off the rubber. You could hear someone shout, step off, because uh, Upton had danced and he was he was going to third. Yeah, and this is when the Padres have to disrupt him. Gio Gonzalez has been out of the strike zone. And if you can disrupt his concentration level, maybe that causes him to throw another mistake. That's in there. Just did tickle the black. One and two. Big lead. Yep, there it goes. That was much closer. Murphy debating whether or not he might have gotten him. Yeah, Murphy puts his glove up for the dugout to check that play. Chris Beyer on the phone immediately checking that. He's safe. Again, dropping that right knee down. That's got to be discussion in that Padres dugout. One and two the count. Ramirez fouls that away. Mark, you made a good point. Go in their feet first. That'd change that right now. It changes everything. Those spikes are a little sharp, aren't they? A little sharper than fingernails. Interesting to see this uh, Washington team's substituting their red colors for the powder blue. This is a nice looking uniform, it is. Yeah. in the center field that's going to fall for a base hit Upton is going to gamble on the throw from center here he comes he scores it's five to three Taylor's throw offline and Ramirez delivers number 24 in the RBI column for Alexei well they paid a lot of attention to the runners and that at bat and you see the breaking ball, but that's a mistake. Ramirez staying inside that breaking ball up the middle. The veteran shortstop comes up big for the Padres. Hey, that was a shallow ball that he caught on center field Taylor. So Glenn Hoffman, knowing the speed of Upton Jr., hey, he's going to prove, he's going to make him prove him that he's going to make a good throw. And that goes the Padres way right there. Well that's the way to answer back two home runs in the top of the inning from Washington. The Padres come right back score two of their own to negate that effort by the Nationals power. Now 5 3 lead. 
Number eight hitter Rosales a key blow in the game a two run double his last time up walked his first at bat. Outside you could hear Holbrook call it himself. Five runs seven hits for the Padres three runs six hits for Washington. Borderline one and one. Hundred pitches for the 30 year old from Hialeah Florida. A heavy workload there in the fourth. Ball two strikes with the pitcher Drew Pomerantz due next. It's a lot of pitches 101 now and only one out here in the fifth inning. Back to back games these Padre hitters have grinded it out. In the dirt nice block by the catcher Lopatone. Sometimes that winning mentality of hitters is driving that pitch count up getting into the bullpen. That's the weakness of this Washington Nationals club. Uh, nothing like a good old fashioned game of catch. <laughs> Outside back. Full count now to Rosales. Even his preparation to hit, you know, just like he runs the first, yeah. runs out his home run. <laughs> Even watch his bat work here. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> frenetic. Now here, he just can't keep still. Three and two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And the snap throw and back to first. They double him up. Ramirez wandering. He got caught in no man's land, and it's a strikeout throw him out. To end the inning, but the Padres score a couple, and we go on to the sixth inning with San Diego leading five to three. SAA proudly serving the needs of the military community for over 90 years by Saquon Casino. Sign up for the new Padres Club card today. And by Mercury Insurance. We're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. The Padres, five runs, seven hits, no errors, have left six. And Washington three runs six hits and an error of stranded two as Travis Jankowski enters the game defensively in center field. And giving John Jay. The day off remember he was hit by a pitch on his wrist let's hope it's uh, just a bruise and not taking any chances they uh, want Jay to get under that x-ray machine. Top of the sixth. 
Pomerantz now working with a two run lead once again. Bryce Harper an infield bunt single and fly to left field his last time. Three and oh now he was taken all the way on that. Shift on Ramirez not playing over in the shortstop position but more toward third after the bunt. Earlier in the game. And on four pitches, he walks. It's 57th time this year that Harper has been free ticketed. And lead off and walk. A uh, little ant farm working out there in that Padre bullpen. Norris out to have a chat as there's action on the Padre pen. With Murphy coming up, Solarte, the third baseman, is going to move back to his normal position. and. Ramirez will go over on the second base side of the bag. Is it a different mindset when you have an off day tomorrow? Absolutely. So all hands on all deck. All hands on deck. Jo Johnny Holstaff. <laughs> Murphy, a single to right and a pop out to short. 92 still has the velocity. Not overworked, 74 pitches. Now, here's a man toughest to strike out in the National League and leading the majors in batting 360. We have time here to analyze his swing. What do you see that makes him? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. He has an early set with that front foot, but he doesn't move his head too much. He sets it. And much like Tony Gwynn, when you have your set vision, you stay in the strike zone much more. He sacrifices a little bit of power at times, but you've seen him. He's powered the baseball even to left center in this series. Simple approach, but it works. Hits out of the crouch. Mark, you know what's amazing to me and Dick as well, but when you see hitters, as we take a look at one of the greatest hitters of all time, Tony Gwynn, you know, there'll be a ball off the plate. And the umpire will call it a strike, but yet the hitter will shake his head and it goes out. Come on. But then you look at the, the hand eye coordination and the, the, the discipline and command of the strike zone from their eyes. It's, it's incredible. Well, that's what we marveled about Tony. You remember that. He, he could tell you it was an inch off the plate, and he was right, but he mm -hmm. commanded that good strike zone. Now he's worked the count to three and one. So many times you think about what Tony Gwynn did, a Barry Bonds, the guys that were spectacular at their craft. They hit strikes so many times. and. And Tony was looking for something, but he would know the strike zone because his vision was so good. And also, you talk about his swing and how he handled the bat, but his strike zone awareness was better than anybody's. Now, three and one to Murphy. Of course, Ted Williams is another that falls into that category with 2012 vision. Catchers used to complain about Williams taking a pitch that was right there. And it'd be called a ball, and then another one called a ball, and then another one called a ball, and then complained to the umpire, and the umpire would say, Mr. Williams, we'll tell you when it's a strike. <laughs> High fly ball to center. Back goes Jankowski, and leaks and makes the catch. Well, how about that? Andy Green makes the substitution in center field. And not that Jay couldn't have made the play as well, but Jankowski timing his lead perfectly. Well, he measured this one so well. You see Murphy with the nice swing. I thought this was gone, especially in their day game. It travels to center field. Nice swing on our phantom cam. Perfect balance. He squares it up, but Jankowski squares that up and times it perfectly at the top part of the wall. And he fires in a strike at second base. Bryce Harper was tagging at first base. Yeah, five inches taller than Jay might have made the difference whether that ball is a home run or a long out. Well done, Travis. So one out to Ryan Zimmerman. Nationals flirting with their fourth home run of the game there. Zimmerman, double play, 6 4 3, and a beauty it was. Popped up the second time. 
now 31 years of age. 11 season with the Nationals a top draft pick out of. Charlottesville University of Virginia. Late on the heater. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh. 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 Wow. That is really cute. That's awesome. <laughs> That's getting the family oh. right now, huh? That's an infield. <laughs> yeah, that really does make it Father's Day. They were shifting on that. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, and two to Zimmerman. Swing and a miss, strike three. Second out here in this sixth inning, and for Pomerantz, his seventh punch out. Drew Pomerantz, a couple times, Mark Sweeney has gone up the ladder a few times. Take a look. Curveball down and in. Does he hit a spot? Oh, ho, ho, you betcha. Rendon, see ya. Espinosa, the fastball. Doesn't get the foot down quick enough to catch up, and Jason Worth. So easy, even a caveman can do it. Goes down swinging. <laughs> yeah, he's your favorite caveman, isn't he? He can hit a little bit. Anthony Rendon up twice, struck out twice. And takes slow, ball one. Mets lost again today. They're in second place behind Washington, trailing six by six at the start of today's action. Low, two and zero. Oh. Rendon, a star in Houston at Rice University. Owls went to high school in Lamar, Texas. That's a strike two and one. You know what Rendon I found this out little nugget. He can turn his head all the way around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like in the batter's box he can look in their dugout. He can spin his head all the way around that way. Who. <laughs> Runner goes. Throw by Norris. Is not in time. Harper able to slide around that tag high on the shoulder. As he moves himself into scoring position and uh, they'll check with there. You know you take a look at the swing on our phantom cam. But look like Rendon fell towards the plate. I thought he affected that throw going down to second base. I think he's out and he's out. I think he got him on the left shoulder before Harper touched the bag. Yeah, I think they're going to challenge this one. And the I wonder if there was contact made at home plate. Fans are watching the replay on the big screen, and that's why you hear the reaction. Of course, no matter where you are, they're going to create a ruckus as if to influence the umpire. That's not going to do any good because the choice is going to be made back in New York or New Jersey. So the calling umpire, Carlos Torres, there with crew chief Jerry Davis on the call to New York. Well, watch the watch the throw of Derek Norris, but Rendon falls towards the plate. Yes, he ducks away from it. I thought he had some connection to that. You wonder if that tag was applied. You wonder what they're challenging here. See, the trail leg doesn't get to the bag. He's he's to the bag, but his lead leg is high and didn't take him long. You're out of there, Mr. Harper. And that's the end of the sixth inning for the Washington Nationals. Good review. Good challenge. And a big play as well by young Travis Jankowski denying Daniel Murphy a home run with that leaping catch.
to Military Sunday, presented by USAA. With Mark Grant and Mark Swinney. And our lovely Julie down below, Dick Enberg, please you're with us. Ryan Schimpf, pinch hitting for Pomerantz, here to lead off the Padre sixth inning. And Gonzalez still out there. Up the middle and a base hit for Shim. His third hit since being called up from El Paso. And we'll see how long Dusty Baker is going to go with the left hander Gonzalez. Here comes Maddox back to the mound again. He's wearing a path to the center circle. Well, this has to be Gonzalez's last hitter as we take a look at Shim's nice swing up the middle. Travis Jankowski came in for John Jay. I like Schiff. You know, he's 28 years old. He's a rookie. Finally getting a chance at the big league level. But, you know, he, he's got an aggressive swing, which I like. Chance there if you get jammed off the end of the bat. Chance there you can dump something in there in between the outfielders and the infielders. But yeah, you see him in person when he first came up. He's not very tall. He's right. muscular. Then you realize. He's had 15 home runs yeah. now. El Paso, not a bad place to hit, but uh, he was leading all of the Padre minor leaguers in home runs. Well, you, yeah, you have home runs uh, coupled with the average, and that's the reason why he earned his promotion. He's shown well at this level. Not over match. He's waited a long time for this chance at 28. And playing a decent third base as well. Travis Jankowski hitting in the Leadoff spot for John J. J. removed from the game. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. We'll get Julie Alexandria on that case and see if any news uh, as to the x rays of his wrist. Well, if you're going to bunt, you want to take it with you going in between the first baseman and the pitcher. I one and one. With Drew Pomeranz's day, 85 pitches, seven Ks in six innings. What a pickup by A.J. Preller. Trade with Oakland, Yonder Alonso. Now Jankowski, who is a good bunner and can bunt for base hits, but his two attempts uh, off mark. He's going right down your alley, Mark Sweeney. What you were talking about, taking it with him down that first base side between the pitcher and the first base bag. 110th pitch from Gio Gonzalez. Now, Rod Carew always said it, which I always remember when you're in a sacrifice situation, set your angle. Just watch it off the bat. Looper off third, and that's Rondon running out of room. So it was pretty simple that Rod Carew talked about. If you want to bunt it down to first base, if you're a left-hander, you point the top of the bat at the third baseman. If you want to go down to third base, it's the knob of the bat at the first baseman. Set your angle and just track the baseball. One and two to Jankowski. No one out. Chop towards second. Murphy has only one play. And there's one out. That's as good as a sacrifice. Moves Schimpf over to second base with one out. And gives Myers and Kemp a chance to add to the 5-3 lead here in the sixth inning. Villanueva tuning up in the bullpen. And here comes Dusty, and that'll be all for Gonzalez. And we'll take a break on this beautiful Sunday. It's 5-3 San Diego.
3. And while we have a moment, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AdVet Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. So Matt Belisle, who worked an inning last night, gave up a hit but no runs, makes his 10th appearance. He's just off the disabled list. That's why he has only nine games up there in that top line. Will Myers the batter, runner at second base. Myers has a base hit and a walk today. And a strikeout. See how we just spit on that pitch. Slider down away for a ball. Okay, that's not for me. Next pitch, please. Well, you see the series number, seven for fourteen. Slider, hard slider. Two and oh. I'm wondering if he's going to give me anything to hit. We've got Matt Kemp on deck, another right handed hitter. Susceptible to the slider down and away. We just saw two sliders of Will Myers. That's in the heart of the plate. Two and one. Is trying to continue this remarkable June performance. And in there again. Four straight sliders. Two and two. Matt Kemp would be next. One out. Padres with a two run lead and have a man in scoring position. Ryan Schimpf out at second. Count goes full. Uh, base open. I would expect a breaking ball still in this situation. Trying to entice Will Myers out of the strike zone. When he struck out, that's exactly what happened back in the third against Gonzalez. A couple of curveballs flowing in. Him out with a fastball. So five uh, breaking balls, and then he hammered the heater. Two away to Matt Kemp. Well, four seamer, that one's just middle, middle away. Very hittable pitch, but stuck it by him for the punchy. Had good success, Kemp against Belisle. Three home runs among the 10 hits. And most of those at bats is when Matt Belisle was with the Colorado Rockies. And there's that slider. So the Nationals, this is the first stop on a 10 game road trip. Four here, then they'll bus up to Los Angeles and play the Dodgers three, and then go back to Milwaukee for three. Near it for the upper deck. Steven Strasburg against Clayton Kershaw tomorrow at Dodger Stadium. That's a pretty good matchup if you're a baseball fan. Yes, sir. There's a man in tune. He's got this Padre hat and the All Star t shirt ready to go. Nice. That's foresight right there. He came dressed for the party. It's just a couple more weeks. That's last year's All Star. See? Smiling. Mm -hmm. In the natty. One and two to Kemp. Big insurance run out there with two outs in the sixth. Yeah. 
Base hit to left center field. That'll get the job done. Schimpf around third, and the Padres lead six to three. Extending his club lead in RBIs to 47. Matt Kemp. Well, after Ryan Schimpf with that pinch hit to lead off the inning with two outs, Matt Kemp gets that slider, but it's a mistake slider over the middle of the plate. He works the end of the bat on our phantom cam. You can see off the end of the bat, but sits nicely in center field for the RBI. That'll close the book on Gonzalez. He gives up all six runs, all earns, eight hits. Now they're going to rule because of his throwing error, five are earned runs. High fly ball, shallow and left, worth coming in. And takes care of Solarte's soft fly, but the Padres a big run. Pinch hitter Schimpf with a base hit moves around to second and comes home on the two out single from Kemp. Our Harris game summary first pitch of the game Michael Taylor deposits in the left field bleachers for a one nothing Washington lead. Padres were tied in the bottom of the first inning and then another home run with a score three to one. It was Danny Espinosa. And then Taylor again two home runs and a double for the leadoff man to tie it at three three runs all on home run solo for the Nationals. Uh, the Padres would come back. Alexei Ramirez dumps that single in the left center, bringing in Justin Upton, and then Matt Kemp, just moments ago, drops a single in the left center, and Ryan Schimp, who is pinch single, was able to come home on Kemp's base hit. So it's six to three, six runs, nine hits for San Diego, three runs, six hits for the Nationals, and Carlos Villanueva comes in here in the top of the seventh inning. You know the one thing that sticks out for me this afternoon Dick is the, the pitchers for the Padres and we, we hear this all the time if you're going to give up a home run have it be a solo shot that's been the case offensively for the Padres they're really grinding out some at bats mm -hmm. and doing a fine job this afternoon. Rondon struck out both times facing Pomerantz. One and one the count. Villanueva, all-purpose bullpen artist, and go long. He can go short. 29th appearance for him. 284 batting average against. Right field, over goes Kemp and makes the play. That ball slicing back toward the right fielder. That helped a bit. That was a rocket off the bat of Rendon. Good jump. That ball is going to slice off of Rendon's bat and right into the path of Matt Kemp, closing the gap in the right center field gap. That is a big first out here. And third base coach Glenn Hoffman 
He wants a happy trip to yes. going back to Baltimore. He's in charge of the social welfare of his yeah, team. Yes. <laughs> Espinosa has struck out and homered his 12th home run of the season. Right handed batting then now. From the left side. A couple of years ago. He had quite a season uh, for the Nationals hit 21 home runs and 39 doubles so many doubles they earned the nickname Tony two bags. <laughs> I like it. Tony two bags. What's he doing this year in that department. Tommy two bags 15 dead. 15 fitting. Fitting two bags. Go down into souvenir corner. Incoming. There's your box score with the Lido band Michael Taylor having a terrific day. Two homers and a double for Taylor. Just three hits for the rest of the club, but two of those home runs, Espinosa solo and well, Taylor with the two home runs. Single for Dale Murphy and a Bun single for Harper. That's been it. Nationals got that leadoff homer in the first, but the Padres tied it in the bottom half of the first on a couple of singles, Myers and Solarte. Got two more did the Padres in the fourth on a two run double from Andy Rosales. Ooh. Hey. And hey, then go. the Nationals tied it with solo home runs Taylor and Espinosa in the fifth. But the Padres came right back to get two in the bottom of the fifth inning. Sack fly Norris and an RBI single Ramirez and then they added on with a Kemp two out RBI single in the sixth inning. When you throw 89 90 Dick not over parking you have to come up inside like that. See if he counters with something down and away here. He went. Yes sir third base umpire. Brian Knight punches him out. Two away. Well our rooftop shot. Is a reminder. Because it's brought to you. By Pinnacle on the park. They say they've got beautiful views there. Well, Professor, look at that view right there. Mm. You've got the water, you've got America's most beautiful ballpark, most beautiful weather. How beautifully manicured that oh. verdant surface, huh? Yeah, yeah, right around there is where Don Orsillo lives, right? Cross that bridge, take a uh -huh. left at the Chevron station. Yeah. Does he still have the neon six sign? Miles? Don's yeah. place, Don's <laughs> place. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, going back to Boston for the service for Bud Collins, you know, just one after another, I said, "How's Don doing out there with the Padres?" I said, "Great." He said, "No, do we miss him?" Yeah, yeah, we miss Don Orsillo. He had quite a fan base. Lobatone. Lobatone sounds like a cream that you should put on a bad rash, doesn't it? <laughs> Too I'm much gonna, sun. I'm going I'm to I'm prescribe for you uh, 1.0 milligrams of uh, Lobitone and put it on twice a day. Apply twice, yeah. And uh, seven days and call me a little later. There's, there's Don. There's Don Tangelo. Oh, one of his daughters there. He's yeah. celebrating Father's Day and he'll be able to have a week off to enjoy with two of his daughters. <laughs> He's the best. Inside. Yeah, it was a borderline call. One and two the count. Got a quick smile, doesn't he, Don? Yep. You certainly work him over. I guess. What's that? <laughs> you work him over oh, on that smile. Oh yeah. Try to press those buttons. Villa Villanueva's got the good breaking ball going this afternoon. That strike three. No breaking ball there. He pins the outside corner with a fastball. A one-two-three inning for Villanueva with a couple of strikeouts. 
stretch half of the seventh inning and as always on our military Sundays God bless America and it will be sung by Petty Officer First Class Petty Officer Yarrick Connor from the U.S. Navy Information Operations Command here in San Diego. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Before we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game here on Military Sunday, please stand and welcome back Petty Officer First Class Yarrick Connor from the U.S. Navy Information Operations Command. Please sing along as he presents God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, why with all God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet He was huge for sure. I wouldn't be where I am today without him. Uh, he taught me the most important thing, obviously, never quit. He never let me quit anything in my life. And uh, he always pushed me, uh, you know, beyond that point. Uh, you know, maybe I thought about giving up or slowing down. He, he pushed me. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful uh, for everything that he's done for me. He was always taking me outside. He was never tired, too tired to go throw the ball even after a long day at work. So uh, definitely grateful and uh, wouldn't be here without him, that's for sure. Ryan Schimpf uh, saluting his father and Schimpf with a pinch single and scored a run back in the sixth inning. Melvin Upton, a couple of base hits. Uh, he is the only man in the lineup with more than one. Everyone in the lineup except the leadoff spot with a base hit for the Padres, a total of nine in the game. Upton after being hit by no that was Norris hit by a pitch Upton uh, tapped out in the first inning singled and scored in the fourth and an infield hit and scored in the fifth. Norris and Ramirez to follow. A 
couple of pitchers in there now. We've got Belisle and Villanueva we saw last half inning. To be a change after uh, for the Padres next half inning, but guys who really don't throw that hard, so got to hit their spots. 91 on the fastball from Belisle, two and two the count. Just missed it. Skies it. Middle of the diamond. Taylor comes in from center, lets the shortstop take care of it. But that hung up there a long time. One away. Our game today is presented in HD by Sony. Can we meet? I know you uh, enjoyed that Shakespeare quote of when a father gives to his son, both laugh. When a son gives to the father, both cry. And here's another one, uh, no anonymous source. A man's children and his garden both reflect the amount of weeding done during the growing season. So well put. Huh? That nice. Gosh, what I put my mom and dad through. <laughs> a lot of weeds, huh? Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> I, I was I was a menace. They probably loved you all the more because you were. Mm. That kind of true of teachers. They, yeah. They, they, you know, they look back on their students and they'll say, "You remember that Johnny in the fifth grade? He just wrote me crazy." He said, but "You know what? I think I loved him more than the other kids." Yeah. <laughs> Norris hit by a pitch, infield hit and scored, and a sack fly. So he officially is one for one today. Another high strike. We've seen that today. It's been consistent. Sam Holbrook calling the balls and strikes this afternoon. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. Bases empty for Derek Norris. Two and two. <laughs> now, next time the Padres are being shown here on Fox Sports San Diego will be in Baltimore four o'clock our TV time on Tuesday Luis Perdomo two and two on the mound. Look oh, at that. Fortunately that ball goes off the barrier protecting that first row. <laughs> Dad was there to protect one but I'm not sure about the other son. He's got a glove doesn't he. I hope so. Yeah. Now his dad's got to tell him now see how hard that ball was hit son. That's how hard the ball is hit to the infielders when they really square one up. Are you ready for something like that. That's something you got to work on. It's not an easy game. Strike three call. Two away here in the seventh. Second strikeout for Bell Isle as we go down to Julie Alexandria. Julie. Hey guys, well, just an update from the Padres clubhouse saying that John Jay left today's game that was in the fourth inning when he was hit by a pitch with a right forearm contusion. He was then replaced by Travis Jankowski, but again, the Padres reporting that he left the game with a right forearm contusion. I'll have an update for you in the postgame. All right, great. Thank you, Julie, for that update. Two outs to Ramirez. And here's the pitch that came in just as he was checking a swing on the forearm hand. That's a very delicate spot as we know lots of little bones in there that don't like being hit by a baseball. Good play by Rondon covering the hole and he throws out Ramirez and the Padres go one two three in the seventh.
Happy Father's Day, 6-3 right now. The Padres lead the Nationals in the top of the eighth inning. Mark and I are working on Padres Live, the post-game show, brought to you by Cox Communications. Ryan Bookner in the ball game, and he's been good all year long. Well, he's taken a stronghold to the eighth inning, and that's important. Last time out, very aggressive with the fastballs at the top of the strike zone. He's confident with that fastball, also has a little bit of cutting action, but you're like you said, Mike, he's been phenomenal. Yeah, punched out the side, as you see there on Friday's ball game against the Nationals, so it is his task to shut down Washington right now. When Mark and I see in the postgame show, you'll hear from Andy Green, and we have a special Father's Day feature for you. All that plus a whole lot more when we see you today after the final out. Take it, Mark. All right. Uh, Mike and Mark will look forward to your report in the postgame show as Chris Heisey will pinch hit for the pitcher Belisle leading off here in the eighth inning and then uh, Michael Taylor and Jason Worth to follow Heisey is four for 18 as a pinch hitter but three of the four home runs so that powerful uh, home run lineup that Dusty Baker puts on the field now, even off the bench so three of the four home runs as a pinch hitter. Six hits away, six outs away from giving Drew Pomerantz his sixth win of the year. And Chris Heisey playing under Dusty Baker in Cincinnati as well, so he's familiar with his craft off the bench and what he can do. Popped up shallow and right. Camp has to hurry in to make the play. And it's time for in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia and the man coming to the plate right now Michael Taylor. He has chauffeured a couple of home runs and a double today. Yeah throwing the head of that Shillelagh out in front and squaring him up. Double two home runs he's driven in two. How about that one home run yep. and 88 at bats then he gets two home runs and three at bats. Wow. Hopefully this at bat against Ryan Booker he can have him pull off to the rest area just take a little snooze. <laughs> Send him back to the dugout with no damage. Pit stop, huh? Yeah. First pitch strength. And, and Dick, I'm guessing that Booker, after watching the balls that he hit out, just be firm with fastballs. Try to locate good fastballs. It was a changeup, and it looked like either a cutter slash slider that he hit for the home runs, off speed pitches. In case you weren't with us for the start of the game, Taylor picked on the very first delivery by Pomeranz, a changeup, and delivered it into the lower deck in left field. And look at that, the last pitch. Oh, Ken Caminetti fan making the grab on that foul ball. Nicely done. Having a tough time catching up to that 95 mile an hour fastball. Okay, grab some pine. <laughs> 32,285, including that happy gentleman with a souvenir. Good. Sunday turnout. Yeah. A lot of folks uh, presented dad today with a baseball ticket. The whole family came out. Great. Great to see. 94 on the fastball high. Two and two to the slender Taylor. He generates a lot of power in that slim body. Chokes up a bit on the handle. Softly dropped into center field, a limp single. He is four for four, a single double and two home runs. What a day. Has to be the best day of his major league career. And he fought off a 94 mile an hour fastball on the inside part of the plate. Heavy dose of fastball, so maybe Taylor's thinking, you know what, I got to get that Shillelagh started early. Sure, he gets down by the label, but sends it out to center field for the base knock. What a day for Michael Taylor. Triple shy of the cycle, and with his speed, uh, he will get his share of triples in his career. Jason Worth flied out and struck out twice. Slow roller to third. Foul ball. Foul ball. No play at first. No play. Third base umpire Knight had to wait because that ball was hugging the line all the way to the bag and until Solarde fielded the ball just in foul territory. It's where the ball is touched. That ball was going on the foul side. 
And you know what, Dick? Everybody did what they were supposed to do. Salarte carries on with it. Worth hustled down the line. Let the umpires sort it out. And in the end, a mood point, a foul ball. Just uh, double checking on Taylor's career best day. He did get four hits in a game last year against uh, Pittsburgh. But uh, I'm quite certain it doesn't tell you what the hits were, but there weren't two home runs, a double, and a single. So he's at first base with one out here in the eighth inning. Andre's trying to protect that three run lead against the league leading Nationals. Division leading. Two and one. Hope they're not happy with that delivery. And the Padres trying to snap that Sunday shutout record. 0 and 10 yeah. on Sunday's coming in. She's looking for a win right there. That's right in the park here. Mm -hmm. Just got to locate it. Three and one outside. Yeah, you don't want to put worth on. You got Harper and Murphy and Zimmerman to follow. If worth is successful, that'll bring the tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. Jason Worth has grounded into seven double plays. It's the team leader tied with Zimmerman with seven. That's a strike. Worth trying to coax a ball for call out of the plate umpire Holbrook. Big pitch. Yeah, he does look like a refugee from the Geico commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder where his brother is. Uh. <laughs> Another foul. Oh, having a tough time catching up with the 94 and 95 mile an hour fastball. 3 2 count. Ryan Booker trying to challenge him. Come on, Rusty, charge those. You can make those plays. How deep is it? Upton drifts back to the wall and on the track makes the catch. The high part is what was important for the Padres. Worth just missed that one. Got a lot of contact. Two away. Well, it was challenging him with the fastball. Full count, foul ball, foul ball, and Jason Worth finally got one. But working under it a little bit too much. That was a big at bat for Bookter. He was down on the count three and one. You put him on with a walk, and now you got the tying run mm -hmm. at the plate. Instead, two outs. And Harper comes up with just Taylor aboard. Bunt single in the first, flying out to left. And he walked and was thrown out trying to steal in the sixth. Well, not much as far as the average is concerned, but look at the home runs and the RBIs. He's going for the downs. Ramirez playing in on the grass at third to take away the bunt. 
And in this situation, a bunt wouldn't be a bad play. Yeah. That if successful, if you give them that left side like they did early in the game, a gift a bunt single, then you bring up Murphy and Zimmerman perhaps. You know what to me it just looks like Bryce Harper, his body is going this way when he starts his swing and they're trying to pepper him away. Look at that. 93. Yeah, taken all the way. So with that said, you know, a pitcher can read that and you maybe throw a wrinkle down and away. He dots the fastball down away, Ryan Bookter. Try to exploit that, take advantage of it. So my point is don't leave anything middle, middle in, because if his body's going that way, that's right in his swing path, it could spell damage. See if his body kind of drifts this way on that pitch, down this next pitch. High outside target. Swing and a miss, strike three. Booker rears back and punches out Bryce Harper. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Padres still holding a 6 3 lead. presents Padres Baseball brought to you by USAA the official military appreciation partner of the San Diego Padres by Petco your complete pet store and by your San Diego County Lexus dealers Padres trying to gain a split in this four game series with the first place Washington Nationals after dropping Eight to five and seven to five contests. The first two rallying last night to win at seven to three and enter the bottom of the eighth inning with a six three lead this afternoon as Felipe Rivero, who was victimized in that six run eighth inning last night, comes in to pitch for the Nationals. Yeah, ugly line last night. Rivero did not record an out. And if the Padres ever needed to add on, this is the inning. No outs recorded. Three hits, six runs, five were earned. He walked two. Rough night in the big leagues last night for Felipe Rivero. Rosales will start it. Has a big blow in this game, a two run double back in the fourth inning. That gave the Padres a short uh, live three to one lead. Oh, and two. Brett Wallace getting loose in the on deck circle. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth inning. Washington will have the middle of the order Murphy Zimmerman and Rendon scheduled. See if Fernando Rodney 
would be a save situation is it going to lose, get loose. He pitched last night in the non save. Had a couple of men on base but did not allow a run. That's Matt Thornton. If it stays the same probably see Rodney if the Padres add on you might see Thornton. Strike three call. Rosales takes the long walk one away here in the eighth inning and it's time now for our Carl's Junior star of the game. Rosales with that double clearing Michael Taylor in center field. Two runs scored. And that gave the Padres a lead. Back in the fourth inning. <laughs> Such a good guy. Oh yeah. So here's Brett Wallace as the pinch hitter. Ninth spot in the order. Brian Schimpf pinch hit in the sixth inning and delivered a single and came around to score on Kemp's two out single. That was the big insurance run to boost the lead to 6 3. Good cut. One and one. Salarte is working the cabbage today. Look at that salad. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's more than romaine. That's looking a little bit like kale, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Really, really healthy hair. <laughs> Two and one. And we're just the two of us uh, follically challenged. Exactly. And we're, we have to be a little envious of anyone's got moss like that. Did you ever let your hair grow out long as a no. youngster? Did? No, that was always cut real short. You really? know, the brush haircuts, yeah. yeah. Crew cuts, brush haircuts, we call them crew cuts. Sure. Army cuts. Especially playing sports, you wouldn't wouldn't want long hair like that, huh? I always cut my hair short for baseball season. When I was a youngster, when I was an amateur. Three and one to Wallace. That's in there. Three for nine is a pinch hitter. Wallace, who had that sensational year off the bench last year, earning him a spot on the 40 man and then the 25 man roster. Bunched up the middle and ranging from shortstop and throwing, pulling him off the bag safe. Espinosa had to go all the way on the second base side of the bag and made that whirling throw blindly over to first and unable to keep Zimmerman on the base. And they're going to credit Wallace with an infield hit. Good direction with that bouncer. Yeah, you can see the infield moving on that one. And Brett Wallace does not have blazing speed, but it's the distance that he has to travel. Murphy's out of the deal, the flip throw, and draws him off the bag. That's why you got to give it 90 feet. Brett Wallace hustling all the way, clearly off the bag, and the Padres trying to add on. Top of the order, Jankowski hitting on John Jay's spot. Jay leaving the game after being hit by a pitch on the forearm. Line drive, nice catch off the dirt, and then to second, but not in time to double up the speedy Jankowski. Good play wow. by Rendon. That was aimed for the left field corner. Hey, Saturday, coming up soon, MLB returns with a game you can only see on FS1 when the Padres take on the Cincinnati Reds at 12.30 p.m. Pacific. Then it's Baseball Night in America with a battle between the Dodgers and the Pirates at 5 p.m. Pacific on your local Fox station. Or you can watch it live on Fox Sports. Go. Well, we'll be in Cincinnati, Mark Grant, and, of course, that's the big day for the Reds fans as they will salute Pete Rose's career under him into the Cincinnati Baseball Hall of Fame. So two outs to Will Myers. A single he scored. Struck out walk struck out. Two outs Jankowski. A threat to try to pull for a second and get in position for Myers. Jankowski has five stolen bases. I love that word pilfer. It's a good word. It's a. Uh, uh oh. They got him. Jankowski leaning the wrong way and those left handers with that tricky move and 
You drop your head and say, let's go to the ninth and get out of here. But that's only. Welcome back. As you can see, the umpires are involved in a review. The Padres have challenged the last call. Jankowski diving back to first. Jankowski thought he was safe. Very close. Enough to overturn. Here's the decision. No. He's out. Bang, bang. And it just was a not enough clear evidence to show that he was safe. He might have been, but it's one of those he could be out, he could be safe deals. And so now we'll go back for another important word. Good. How play of the game Travis Jankowski just into the game for John Jay takes a home run away from Daniel Murphy. That play back in the eighth inning sixth inning. Three home runs all solo accounting for all three Washington runs today as they build their home run lead in the National League but fortunately for Padre pitching no one on base for those three clouts. San Diego leads six to three. Here's can, Rodney. Can you hear the drums, Fernando? There was something in the air that night. The stars were bright, Fernando. They were shining there for you and me for liberty, Fernando. He's been perfect this year. No earned runs in 24 and a third innings to start the season. He's closing in on Randy Jones' record at the start of a baseball year. Jones went 26 innings without giving up an earned run back in. 1975. First pitch is a strike to Daniel Murphy. 
Fernando struck out the side in the ninth inning last night but hit a batter and gave up a single to Ben Revere so there were runners at first and third when he struck out Taylor to end the game. Change up outside. Murphy is single to right in the first inning popped up and then that long out to center field with Jankowski going up over the top of the wall to take a home run away from him. Well, that change up is a good one. Yes it is. I'm talking about the man toughest in the entire National League to strike out in Daniel Murphy but that last change made him look bad. Cabio. Taken low and away. Two and two. Murphy, Zimmerman, then Rendon here in the top of the ninth inning. Swing and a miss. He got him with the changeup. Three in a row he threw him. One away here in the ninth. Our greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T Mobile. And we look ahead to the Baltimore series. We'll have to face Chris Davis. He's got 16 homers this year, five in the last 10 games. Mark Trumbo leading the American League with 20. And Manny Machado will be returning from his four game suspension. See the brilliant young uh, infielder for the Orioles. It Old did. starts Tuesday night. How about Camden Yards? Oriole Park at Camden Yards. The ball flies at that ballpark. Yeah. That might be a key in that series. Home runs. Ryan Zimmerman, 0 for 3, grounded into a double play, popped up and struck out this afternoon. Well, it's oh. been a Sunday solar eclipse for the Padres this year. Yeah. <laughs> ten Sundays, ten losses. Here's two outs away from ending that terrible streak. That last pitch was pretty close, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Two and zero now to Zimmerman. <laughs> he challenged him. Ninety-five. Remarkable the velocity gets out of just a abbreviated motion to the plate doesn't get all coiled up and to fire he just uh, blessed with arm speed man high and foul so four o'clock on Tuesday we hope you'll join us for the first of just a two game series in Baltimore and then a quick Flight over to Cincinnati for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday games with the Reds. And then our supreme swing and a miss. Strike three, a couple of punch outs. He gets Murphy and Zimmerman. And that'll bring up Anthony Rendon. Oh, the stars are shining bright for Fernando. Very late on the fastball. Get out there, get up on top, and let it fly. Spin that rock. And Connor Larson, our aide de camp, reminds us that after the Cincinnati series, they come home in two games with Baltimore right. on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and in the first of July weekend series with the Yankees. And some good ball from the east uh, coming in here. I hope you're making your ticket plans. Rendon two strikeouts and a line drive out to right. Bryce Harper kept in check today an infield hit and a walk but no damage done. Inside but not by much. down to their final strike. <laughs> A 
lots of dads making noise. Yeah, that's how you do it, kids. You can yell at home, but watch <laughs> Papa at the ballpark. Trying to strike out the side to close the deal. A little extra up to 96. Full count to Rendon with Danny Espinosa with a home run on deck. A little thought walk for Fernando. Thirty two thousand two eighty five here on this Sunday. Padres win. Rodney strikes out the side. The final San Diego six and Washington three. Mike Pomerantz. Dick, thanks very much for Mark and I see you on the postgame show. We'll talk about this first win on a Sunday of 2016. Andy Green's thoughts on it, and we get you set for the road trip in the Orioles.